Praise the Lord. Thank God for another opportunity to share God's word. Uh, the topic is the counsel of the Lord. And when you think about the word counsel, it means advice, uh, guidance, direction, instruction, guidelines, facts, warning, caution. And so what I'm speaking about tonight is, uh, again, the counsel of the Lord. We're talking about God being the one that gives us the advice, God being the one to give us the clear guidance, God be the one to uh, instruct us, praise God, gives us facts, God be the one to uh, give us warnings that's necessary in this walk of life, praise God. Father, we thank you for this privilege, this opportunity to share your word one more time. Father, we thank you for those in the listening audience, Lord God, uh, pray right now as you begin to prepare our hearts and minds to receive your word, Lord God. We thank you for the impact that it's going to have in and on our lives, Lord. Lord, the healing, Lord, the deliverance, Lord, the peace, the joy, the salvation. And Lord, in advance, we do indeed want to say thank you. We love you. We bless you. We honor you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And amen. Glory to God. Again, the counsel of the Lord. And I say counsel is advice. Counsel is direction. Counsel is guidance. Psalms 1 and 1 reads, it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Verse number 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. And so when we look at this, first of all, we're talking about biblical meditation and biblical meditation is focusing one's mind on the scriptures and when you think about that from that particular perspective you know a lot of times we can read something and it not really uh, enter into our spirits not really enter into our entire being what happens is it just becomes words and so biblical meditation you begin to speak God's word Word of God says that faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. You know, there's certain verses of scripture, <clears throat> praise God, that you know are important uh, for you. Sometimes you need to speak those verses of scriptures out. You need to begin to hear them. You need to begin to, to meditate on them so that they can become a, a part of who you are. They can be uh, manifested deep down into your spirit. Praise God. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse number 19 reads it says I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death blessing and cursing therefore choose life that both you and your descendants may live and as I look at this particular verse I see God giving very, very clear instructions, very, very clear advice to his people. And here, as he was saying, <clears throat> excuse me, choose life, choose the blessing. And he was saying to that particular generation at that time, because he spoke about their descendants, he said, the impact that you will allow my word to have in and on your, in and on your life, excuse me, right now, it will be beneficial uh, for your descendants. It will be beneficial for the next uh, generations to come. And the reason it will be beneficial is because if you are obedient to my word and you're being blessed of my word and you say, share this with your sons and daughters and they share it with their sons and daughters, then what happens is, is uh, generation after generation, which means your descendants, they will be able to experience those blessings that God was saying here. But again, God gave them a choice. See, one thing about God is he's not going to force you and I to do anything. Now, mind you, there are some things that God is going to do regardless of what you and I do. But then there's other things in our lives that will not happen unless we allow the Spirit of God to truly lead and guide us because he has given us, and I say given us, he's given mankind a free will to say yes or no. And here, God did advise them to choose life, which included his 
blessings. Praise God. And I believe that he is in fact still the same God with the exact same standard uh, standards that, that, that he had in that particular time period. And the standard was for them to have a level of obedience to his word. Deuteronomy 30 and 15, it reads, <clears throat> God's command to the people was to love the Lord, your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments, his statutes and his judgments. And when you look at that, what God was saying, be obedient to what I'm saying to you. Today, when we look at the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in, in, in a believer's life, it's a matter of being obedient as we're led by the Spirit of God. That's what's so very, very important in the life of believers today. But I still say God has the exact same standard that he had thousands of years ago when he was speaking to his people here uh, in uh, Deuteronomy. Praise God. In Isaiah 9 and 6, it reads, it says, And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor. God is, in fact, a wonderful counselor. God is, in fact, one who, if we would allow, he can show us, he can tell us, he can lead us, he can direct us, praise God, in the way that we need to go, Lord, so, so that you and I can be blessed of God. You and I can be successful as it relates to God. I'm not telling you that that means you're going to have a million dollars. For some, it will. Praise God. For some, it will because that's how he operates. Glory to God. But for others, it will be whatever that calling is on your particular lives. Praise God. Glory to God. Psalms 33, 11 reads, it says, the counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. So in other words, if we are mindful enough to uh, actually pay attention to his counsel, the scriptures say his counsel stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. In other words, what he's speaking is, and what he's saying is, is that if you are obedient to my word, you can enjoy the benefits of the blessings that come from your level of obedience. That's exactly what he's saying here. And he's saying that to you and I today in this particular time that we are living in. Praise God. Proverbs 19, <clears throat> excuse me, 21, it reads, it says, there are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel will stand. In other words, yes, there's many plans in one's heart. The one thing that I would have to uh, ask that you're aware of and mindful of to know and understand that those plans, in fact, did come from God. And yes, we have a lot of plans in our heart. But when we look at what the scripture says, it says, nevertheless, it's the Lord's counsel that will stand. In other words, regardless of whatever particular plan, whatever particular desire you may have, if in fact, uh, you are not <clears throat> allowing the counsel of God to lead you, to guide you, so that you can be successful in those particular areas, and you'll find yourself to be fighting actually against what God has actually ordained for uh, your life. And so you really don't want to do that because a person really who has committed his plans, who has recognized that these particular plans uh, actually came from God, and it is God, uh, scripture says we're made for his good pleasure. And if in fact uh, you and I are made for his good pleasure, that means the plans that we have should line up with the leading and guidance of the Holy Spirit. And if those plans are lining up with the leading and guidance of the Holy Spirit, you will be, one must be, come successful. And the reason why you're becoming successful is because it's for God's purpose, it's for God's pleasure. And if your life has given him pleasure, praise God, just imagine uh, some of the different things that you'd be able to experience because God is actually getting pleasure out of exactly what you're doing. Excuse me. So when I go now and I look at Proverbs 16 and 3, it says, again, commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. In other words, whatever it is that you have a desire to do, allow the Spirit of God 
to lead you, to guide you, to direct you in those particular areas. Praise God. In the scripture, in, excuse me, Proverbs 3 and 6, it reads, it says, In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Now, we look at this particular verse of scripture, and it says, in all your ways, not in some of your ways, not the little things, because what happens is we only want to give God the things that we deem are too big for us to handle. However, we should give God all things. The scripture says, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Uh, nothing's too small for God, and nothing definitely is too big for God. It's a matter of what we do. It's a matter of how we handle uh, what God has given to us. Praise God. That's the key there. Um, when your plans are total opposite of God's will for your life, um, you'll find yourself fighting against God. You say, what do you mean by that? In other words, if God has called you to a particular ministry and or calling in your life, and you're doing the total opposite, you're fighting against what God has ordained for your life. And then when you look at it from that particular perspective, what happens is, is that now you find yourself not being successful in that particular area. You begin to question uh, whether or not you're where you're supposed to be, if you're doing what you're supposed to you know, be doing. And the reason why you begin to question uh, uh, where you are is because of your lack of success. Um, but if you were to uh, be more obedient, seek the counsel of God, be obedient to the counsel of God, things would turn around and you will begin to see that you are on the path that God has actually ordained for your life. See, you can't continue to say that Jesus is Lord and not be obedient. Most people don't mind saying that he is in fact their savior. Their struggle is with lordship. Lordship means that he is in fact um, in charge of one's life. He is in fact the Lord. He is in fact uh, uh, the one who is supposed to tell you where, when, how, what, but we don't want to go that far. We like the fact of salvation, but that lordship, ah, uh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not trying to go there with that. But we've got to be mindful that if he is in fact Lord, then that means he is in fact in charge of our lives. I read a little bit earlier, but again, reread Proverbs 16 and 9. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. In other words, let God lead you. Let God direct you. I, I said in, in Proverbs 3, 6, in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. He can keep you from going into some dark areas. He can keep you from going into some areas that are deemed unsafe if you would allow him to lead you, to guide you, and to protect you. Praise God. So again, I'm talking about the counsel of God. I'm talking about the advice of God. I'm talking about God showing us. I'm talking about God directing us. I'm talking about God uh, allowing us to to see and, and him giving us guidelines as it relates to this life that we're in right now. Praise God. <clears throat> Isaiah 46 and 9, it reads, it says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. And what God is saying is, no matter where you go, no matter who you talk to, no matter how smart they may think that they are, there's nobody like God. Nobody can give you the advice that God can give you. No one can counsel you like God can counsel you. And that's the whole key. And when I look at this again, he says, remember the former things, he said, of old, for I am God. That's what he said. And there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. So praise God, no matter how intelligent that particular person is in your life, uh, how, how smart they are, how many degrees they may possess, they are not smarter or wiser or smarter than a God who's all-knowing, all-powerful, all-present. Praise God. Glory to God. 
Isaiah 46 and 10 reads, it says, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. So he's saying, praise God, that whatever's going on in your life, if we are obedient to him, it will be a, a pleasurable to him. He will be pleased with what's going on in our lives. Praise God. If you think right now with some of the different things that you're doing, some of the different places you've been, ask yourself the question, do I really believe that my life is pleasing God? Is God getting pleasure out of what I'm doing? He should. Why? Because he made you and I for his good pleasure. Praise God. Glory to God. Isaiah 45, 18, it reads, it says, for thus says the Lord, who created the heavens, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, who did not create it in vain, who formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is no other. And what God is saying here, or what the word is saying about God here is that God is all knowing. God is the creator of all. Praise God. He didn't create it in vain. He created this world so that we might have a place to live in. Praise God. We have a place where we can walk and talk and breathe and that our lives should honor and glorify him. Praise God. One more time. I am the Lord and there is no other. Praise God. Isaiah 45, 19, it reads, it says, I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I did not say to the seed of Jacob, seek me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Praise God. In other words, again, we look here, God says, it was no secret how he revealed this, how he revealed that, praise God. The secret was in not knowing, praise God. So he said he didn't do it in a dark place. He did it, praise God, not in vain, but he did it so that people could see him, so that people could know him, so that people could give him all the honor, all the glory, all the praises. That's why God wants to continue to show himself strong in our lives. He wants us to know who he is, praise God. You know, some people talk about God as if he's um, some pie in the sky, somebody that you can't even begin to know, somebody that's so distant that you can't have a relationship with. See, that was why he sent us his son, Jesus, so that we can be in a relationship with him. The relationship with him comes by having a relationship with his son. Praise God. That's why he gave us his son, Jesus, so that you and I as born again believers can be in a relationship with almighty God and being in a relationship with almighty God, seeking his counsel, being obedient to his counsel is it, what do we have joy? We have peace. We have love. We have all those different things that we are able to experience because we are obedient to his word. Praise God. Isaiah 45, 22, it reads, it says, Look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth. For I am God and there is no other. In other words, there's salvation only in Christ Jesus. Praise God. There's only salvation that comes uh, through the Son that allows you to have the relationship with the Father. Praise God. Isaiah 46 and 5, it reads, I like this particular verse of scripture. It says, to whom will you liken me and me equal and compare me that we should be alike? <laughs> In other words, when you look at this, God is saying, who out there can you compare me to? Who out there can you say are equal to who I am? Who out there can you say can do uh, 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 for you, protect you, keep you, guide you, direct you like he can. And the answer clearly, there's not a person uh, or another spirit being who's able to do those things. And God says that there is none like him that uh, he could be compared to. 
praise God. So that, that should be kind of a level of excitement. We, God said there's nobody, praise God, that you can compare him to. There's nobody that's as powerful as he is. There's nobody that can love you like he loves you. There's no one who can extend grace and, and mercy like he does to his people. Not one person, not one spirit, praise God. And that's why we've got to understand how important the counsel of the Lord is for born again believers. See, yes, we have people in our lives and God puts people in our lives that can counsel us, that can give us some direction. However, the first counsel must come from God. You know, you really need to go to God in order to know and recognize that the person or persons that are in your lives right now are in fact the right people that you should be hearing from, the right people that you should be listening to. Because there's a lot of times that people will tell you something, people will give you something and still may not have your best interest at heart. It sounds good, it looks good, Oh, the way they presented it, the way they articulated themselves. Oh my God, you had goose pimples and all those different things going on because you got excited about what they were saying. The question is, was it truly from God? Was it God's counsel? Or was it just something, praise God, that came from them? Was it something that they thought about? Was it something that made them feel good about who they were? Was it something that made them think that if they shared what they shared with you, it would make you feel better about uh, 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 who you are and make you look at them in a, in, a, in a different way. Maybe you would see them as, as successful. Maybe you would see them as holy. Maybe you would, you would just, something would happen. And that's why sometimes people are talking. That's why people sometimes say things. And, and sometimes they really, uh, 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 their desire is not the desire because it's not the counsel of God. Praise God. So as I look, as I go on, you can see uh, why the counsel of God is so important. See, God's purpose for our lives and his counsel will allow you and I, regardless of the opposition that comes from the enemy, regardless of how he continues to attack. And you know the scripture in John chapter 10, it says that he comes to steal, uh, to kill, and to the Destroy. Jesus said, though, that I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And so we've got to understand that, <clears throat> excuse me, the counsel of God is so very, very, very important in our lives. And it's so important that it will help us to be successful in this faith walk. Look, you and I have enough things that's uh, constantly uh, bombarding us, constantly coming against us, constantly trying to derail us, constantly trying to, to trick us, to, to dupe us, to, to con us, to pull our attention away from God. Those things are always going to come. The key to it is, is we've got to make sure through a discerning spirit that it is in fact the counsel of God, that God has sent this counsel, praise God, that God has put these people in our lives, that God has actually given them a word for us. And the word is not, uh, mind you, a made up word. It's a word that came directly from the Lord, praise God. And you know, so often people will go, well, I don't believe that that's from God. I don't, you know, it's all about your spirit. It's all about your relationship with Almighty God because God has given you a discerning spirit. And that discerning spirit, you can discern whether or not those people, praise God, are in fact uh, speaking to you uh, as counsel from God because God will allow you in your spirit to, to agree. You know, the scriptures say, test the spirit by the spirit. You will begin to know if that particular spirit that's speaking to you through that particular person or persons is in fact from God. So don't be fooled, don't be duped, don't be conned, don't be tricked. Praise God, stay obedient to God's word, stay sensitive to his spirit, continue to be obedient to the leading and guidance of the Holy Spirit continue to recognize God's counsel. Remember his counsel is advice. 
his counsel is guidance, his counsel is direction, glory to God. And so you know in this walk of life that there's so many, many times when we're seeking counsel from somebody and in the end, the advice that they gave us did not line up with what God gave you and I. So be careful who you allow to, to pray for you, who you allow to come into your most inner circle. You know, you can have a couple of circles, praise God. You you might have an outer circle, then you got a, a inner circle, but your most inner circle is the one that you keep reserved for the spirit of the living God. And so if he chooses to bring someone into that particular spirit, it will be someone who's being obedient to his word. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the peace. We thank you for the joy. We thank you for the love. We thank you for the impact. Father, most of all, we thank you for your counsel. We thank you for sending people who has a desire to seek and serve you. We thank you for sending people who are obedient to your spirit. We thank you. We praise you. We bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You know, I, I, I read a verse of scripture and it comes from Isaiah 45, 22. I read a little bit earlier. It says, look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth. And what I'm trying to get you to understand is, is that God is saying that the only way, praise God, is to be saved is through his son, Jesus. Now, when you think about that from that particular perspective, the scripture also says that the only way that you want to go to Jesus is that the Lord is prompting, the Lord is calling, the Lord is tugging, the Lord is pushing you to Jesus. And then Jesus says that the only way to the Father is through me. Praise God. And so when you look at that, maybe today the Lord is, 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 is nudging and tugging at your heart right now. And he's giving you that desire to to want to uh, accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And you say, you know, I want to do that, but I'm, I'm just not real sure how to do that. I do have a desire. God has given me that desire in my heart. And I want to get to know Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. You say, so what do I do? I say, this is what you do. You say, first of all, you think about the scripture. The scripture says that one must confess with his mouth and believe in his heart that Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world. Jesus died, was buried, raised on the third day, and he now sits at the right hand of the Father. And so, that's where you start. And then second, you say, well, Jesus, I, I, I want to accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I say, repeat this prayer of faith with me. You say, Father, it's in the precious name of Jesus that I come before you. I believe and recognize that Jesus Christ died on the cross for the sins of the world. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe that you have accepted Jesus' death as debt payment for the sins of the world. Father, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Live in me and through me for the glory of God. Jesus, today I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for coming into my heart. Jesus, I thank you this day. Father, thank you for receiving me into your family. It's in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen and amen. And I say welcome to the family of God. The scriptures say the angels in heaven are rejoicing over your conversion. I'm rejoicing over your conversion. The one thing that I would tell you to do, get that Bible, begin reading in the New Te uh, Testament. I suggest uh, St. John chapter 1. Begin reading there. Praise God. But most of all, you must find that Bible-believing, teaching church and become an active member of the family of God. Praise God. And so I say to the entire listening audience, I ask the Lord's blessings on you and your family. May he continue to keep you in his perfect peace. I love you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah.